Good afternoon. Sean here, Mountains Garage. Don't get too excited. I didn't get too far ahead of you. This is the Jericho 3-speed from the end of yesterday's video. I mentioned I was going to build a shifter for it. I dug out my Hurst version of the Mr. Gasket V-Gate shifter. They call it the V-Gate 2 Hurst bought out Mr. Gasket, I would assume sometime in the early 70s, and they took what was probably the most popular vertical gate shifter at the time, the V-gate, Mr. Gasket, and made it their own. Hearst had their own version called the Ramrod. Maybe before the video's over, I'll find one. I got one around here in the box. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Ramrod shifter. I love her shifters. The ramrod shifter, not so much. Mostly because I, I had one way back in the day, and it was okay, I guess. It does take a smaller hole in the floor. I'll give it that. Nowadays, you find them in a thousand pieces in the box. I actually have two of them kicking around here. And I've yet to assemble one. I prefer the Mr. Gasket. I think it's a really good looking shifter. Funny, the Mr. Gasket H-pattern shifters, I really didn't have any use for, but these Mr. Gasket vertical gate shifters are really nice. They usually pretty well beat up by the time you find them. The Hurst version is super rare, and I have this one. The chrome is beautiful. It's not rusted. It has the stop package. I'll go over all that. Pretty fantastic, and uh, as usual, I got a deal on it. So here it sits. I have gone through in the last couple of years probably a dozen of the Mr. Gasket V-Gate shifters. I built rods and rod ends for them and sold them all. I hung on to this one because it was the nicest one I've had and slightly rarer, I guess. So My goal is to set it up on this Jericho, which is for a GM. And if I ever graduate to an actual four-speed I'll be able to utilize everything because I'm going to have a three speed first gear being where a second normally would be. So I'll be up, pull up on this and back for first or rough, what's really second and then third, fourth. So that'll be pretty simple. Reverse will be on the rod. Putting an H pattern shifter on this would be a little bit strange because you wouldn't have the reverse in the upper left hand corner. In a typical three-speed, reverse would be over and up or over and down, depending on the shifter. There would be nothing up in that hole. It wouldn't even go into that hole. And then you'd have, you'd be starting off in the lower left and immediately going through the, the H to get to second. This will be a lot more, well, a lot easier anyway. So let's go over what I've done so far and what I need to do, which is plenty. When I, when I build a shifter, it typically takes me a solid two days. Is it worth the effort? Yep. Are you working for pennies if you sell it? Yep. <laughs> but that's okay. The first thing I did after yesterday's video is find a couple of 7 16 bolts to screw in to the tail housing where the mount would go. And that lets it sit solid on the bench. Otherwise, you're going to chase it nonstop. I initially had just a wedge shoved under it, but that didn't work out. And then in my box of goodies, of course, this is a beautiful shifter. The T-handles doesn't match. It has a couple nuts on it. That'll have to go. I usually make my own T-handle and matching reverse knob on the lathe out of some round aluminum. But, say, the chrome on this, like you just took it out of the box. So the long, which is the brand, vertical gate shifter, I had two of these. One is in the Nova with the bench seat. And the other one I sold. But I, the first one I bought didn't have the bracket, the bolts to the transmission right there. But the guy I bought the shifter from had made this or had got this information. That's not even my handwriting other than the rod, the scratching of the length of the rods that I have to build if I may build another one. And goofing around, I realized that the Mr. Gasket, I mean, the 
bracket, I had a factory bracket, and I made a cardboard template of it that the holes line up. The two half inch mounting holes for the shifter. This is normal. There's this big uh, high nut, is all it is, and some half inch bolts that go through the bracket. That's what holds the shifter on. On this side, these bolts hold the stop package on. You never want to have these loose without the high nuts because the whole shifter will fall apart and it's listed as non-serviceable. You can get it back together, but I tend to try to leave this. If you have to add the stop package, do the bolts one at a time. It'll save you a lot of aggravation because it's the only thing holding the shifter together. You'll see a lot of vertical gate shifters for sale online with these solid straight rods like I build. Not a lot, but there's a few. If you look at how many spaces they put, you don't want to... I run it with this. This is an extra thick bracket. The Mr. Gasket bracket was this width. So I may have to add a spacer if I want it out away from the transmission this far. The ones you see for sale, they have two high nuts and a spacer. This shifter is just about under your leg. I don't know how you even get it in the car. Study the pitches for yourself, but that won't work. I mean, it looks good on the bench and they do that especially on the Borgwana Super T10 and the Muncie, to get the a straight rod on the reverse lever. When I have done all the other ones, I knock out this pin. I call it the Dilbert pin, and that's a whole funny story by itself. This is made, this is locked in neutral right now. When you engage reverse, you can't shift the shifter. It locks it up. The long vertical gate and all the Mr. Gaskets I did for the Super T10, I pushed to reverse. The long already pushed to reverse and I didn't want to build a shifter that's backwards. So I made mine the same way and it's more natural in the car. I like to push to back up. The way the top loader is, it'll actually be working in the intended, I might leave the pin in because I'll be stroking this direction for reverse. That's just the way it works out. That's a whole lot of talking. Let's get back to the meat and potatoes. Most GM four-speed shifters measuring back from what would be the surface of the bell housing, the stick is around 19 inches back. In this case, I'm going to move the shifter back a little bit and probably split the difference. I don't even know the intended application of what the floor is going to look like, but I feel I should go back a set of holes. Now the Jericho has two sets of holes in parallel. It doesn't take the triangular pattern. I was actually able to get two of the bolts in the Jericho, not the third. But the shifter itself needs to go up on the transmission. If this rod is going to ride here, it's going to be running drastically uphill currently, especially the inside one. I could make it work, but I don't like it. I noticed when I bolted it on, I was probably an inch low. So I'm gonna make a new bracket to bolt onto the tail housing to remount the shifter and I'm gonna move it back an inch. So there's some work to do. The top loader is different than a Borgwana Super T10 or a Muncie in the neutral position. All the rectangular hole, if you will, is laid back on an angle. So you need an arm with an angle. I'm gonna actually, the ones I'm gonna make are actually gonna have more than that. That gets it almost straight up and down. But if you put a typical Hurst arm on you, there's no way to get it <laughs> to, go, to go that direction. It would work this way, but it's not gonna go down beyond center. So your standard arm, which I have all kinds of these, is not gonna work. To buy a set of these for a top loader, I'm looking at almost $100. Actually, I was looking at over $100 used. So I dug through my stuff and I found a few, but this isn't really long. This would probably work for reverse in this direction. But it's also not thick enough. When you tighten the nut, I'd have to put a spacer of some sort on there. So long story short, I'm going to make some. I went under the bench. This old rusty steel, a buddy of mine, and I split a dumpster full, I've told the story before. I shined up this piece, it's perfect thickness, perfect width. 
uh, that dumpster continues to give gifts and it will for years to come. I always seem to be reaching for a piece of it. I still have some outside. I've used a lot of it. That was one of the greatest days, discovering that dumpster full of metal and we split it for $100. I was just joking the other day that every time I get the vise perfectly trammed, you bolt the vise down semi-tight, put a dial indicator in here, and you run the table back and forth till it reads zero all the way across. So this is in perfect squareness, if you will. Well, now, when I make these, they're straight. So... I can just run, make a hole like that by running the table back and forth. Well, it's not going to work for these. I'm going to have to turn the vise to be able to do that. So the joke's on me. I just got done making it perfect, and now I get to loosen it up and move it. But I can do it again. You just got to get used to doing it. I sound like I'm complaining, and I'm not. I'm really fortunate to have this tool. I just think it's funny. So I'm going to get busy making some stuff, and I'll show you my progress, but before I do, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. What is that? All it says on the base is a 6-inch Anderson. It has a number on this side, 6-inch Anderson IPS. Now my guess, and if actually if I actually found out what it really was, it might take the mystery out of it. I found this on the side of the road. I used to set it up in the field and hit golf balls at it. It's good for that. I've carried it with me for over 20 years, going on 30. And I've been cleaning lately, and I ran across my 6-inch Anderson, so I think I'll just leave it on the bench. So if you know what it is, go ahead and tell me. I guess it has something to do with an antenna or a weather vane or something. It obviously mounts on a curve. I don't know. The half inch mounting bolt holes I just transferred over. And for the bottom mount, doing a little cardboard aided design, a little tap tap with a hammer. And see if I can space it up enough to make it useful. I'm trying to use this piece of aluminum. If not, I'll have to sacrifice another piece. That could be quite a bit of error. I just traced out these holes with a marker, eyeballed the center with a prick punch, and I went ahead and drilled them the exact size, 3 8 and half inch. And I always try the bolts then. I can always go one size bigger. That's perfectly acceptable. In this case, I didn't. It's nice. So now I'm going to pretty up my bracket. And you can see that it had to lean back some. The Mr. Gasket bracket actually leans back the shifter compared to the long which was kind of straight, which is what I had tried on originally. And this is also thicker. This is 5 eighths. The piece of aluminum I'm working with right here is half inch. I read a tip about putting some bar soap on the blade when you're cutting aluminum. It seemed to make a big difference. And it smells good. The bracket is all prettied up. Shifter is mounted. The trick in building any shifter, but these especially because they take up a lot of real estate, you want this as low as possible, the whole body of the shifter, and in toward the tail housing as much as practical. My rod will still be running on an angle, but I need to miss the side cover. And the same goes for everything up here. It needs to be as close to the transmission as possible because there's not that much room in the transmission tunnel. You could set everything way out here, and it would look great on the bench, but it's going to look strange in the car when you transmission tunnels the size of a Kenworth so in this case these are going to run slightly uphill again I'm trying to favor this down as far as possible but still be up high enough to work uh, if you're not careful the rods will run into the stop bracket I have the threaded stops out right now but and I've said this before it's hard to believe they sold the shifter without this on a shifter you're gonna you know probably whale pretty hard you could buy it without stops so Pretty simple bracket if you had to make one. I don't believe you could buy any of this stuff now unless it's new old stock. I have bought a couple things like that spring right there. But we're looking good now. I gotta build some arms. 
for the side of the transmission, and then I make some rods. I'm used to this area of the transmission being the side cover. In this case, it's the side of the transmission. These actually stick out pretty well, so I got lots of room to work back here, more so than the transmission with a side cover. Kind of like in the top loader. We'll see. Well, that's going to have to end part one of this video because I, I fear it's getting kind of long already. I'll probably make the arms tomorrow. I do have some Treble 400 parts coming. It's already well past five o'clock in the afternoon and UPS hasn't showed up yet. But when they do, I bought a load of Turbo 400 parts for myself. <laughs> to build my 475 transmission that's sitting over there on the floor in all its greasy glory. So I might mess around with the forward drum that I bought. Tomorrow I'll shoot a different video for that, so who knows. But tune in for part two of the Hurst V-Gate 2 installation on the Jericho wannabe four-speed. <laughs> but it's a three-speed. Catch you later, like, share, subscribe. Later, bye.